Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for tuning in to our podcast. It's about payroll. We're your hosts, Brian Escobar and Walter William Duncan III. Whether you're new to the payroll industry or a seasoned vet, this is the podcast for you. Welcome back, folks. This is Brian Escobar, and we're going to cover the earnings piece. Your earnings is representative of the dollar amount per hour that you work. That's your base rate. That's what you get. That's what you've negotiated going into the job. But in an earnings library or an hours and earnings codes library, you could have many more pay codes depending on your company and the older they are the more pay codes you might have sitting in the library or your validation table or your data set however you'd like to refer to it as a payroll professional or as a manager you want to be familiar with those codes which ones are active and which ones are not as a payroll professional you want to limit the codes that your managers can see so that you can clean it up for them. You want to limit the amount of error that, you know, could happen. And as a manager, you want to be familiar with the codes that you do use. And be sure to ask questions if you have them, because you could call out a code that the payroll department needs to clean up. Your hours and earnings library could be made up of many different codes. You want to get familiar with those codes and what they mean. Some of them could mean OT rate. And if we're talking about overtime, has Basically, one general rule, but with exceptions state by state, the general rule is that it's overtime over 40 hours in one work week, right? Now we can circle back up to work week when we were talking about work week in the first part of this payroll 101, and work week is defined as seven consecutive 24-hour periods. That's your work week. So your overtime happens in that one work week. If your job defines the work week, and if it crosses the work week, then that means it's a new overtime calculation. It resets. So you have to be careful there. Sometimes we we think we have overtime, but we didn't realize that the day cut off on an old pay period or started a new pay period, and it's it goes toward the next pay period. And that would be your general question from employees as a payroll professional and as a manager. They'll have some question about what the OT is representative of. So you have to go back to their time card and look and see, hey, this is the pay period. Here's the work week, right? We talked about this in the first part and you want to understand what those two are and then you'll be able to do an overtime calculation and confirm or deny the claim from your employee. And it's a teaching opportunity for them. Hey, this is your pay period. This is what happens. If they're new to the workforce, they may not understand all of this. So it's a great opportunity to show them if they've been in the workforce for a long time, they may have forgotten their pay period, especially with organizations that change a lot. So just a great time to call it out for them. But as a payroll pro and as a manager, you want to know where that OT calculates. The exception for OT is in particularly California. They have overtime by the day. So if you exceed eight hours in one day, the minute that minute over eight hours starts the overtime clock at a premium rate. And California is very employee centric. So that's one of the things that you should know. Get familiar with any overtime laws in the states that you operate in. Our work is very specific. Sometimes it's good to know what the whole country is doing. But at the end of the day, you need to just focus on the states you're in. Or if you know you're going into new states, you could learn about those as well. So for overtime, you want to understand what your work week is and if you have any exceptions like California, okay? Speaking of earnings, we also have minimum wage. You can have a federal minimum wage and a state minimum wage. The difference between the two will be what's more beneficial to the employee. So if your federal rate is 10 bucks an hour and your state rate is $15 an hour, they're getting the state rate, the state minimum wage, okay? Keep that in mind. It's usually very self-regulating, meaning employee regulating, because if they're not making minimum wage, they're going to tell you right away. In the best case, you are proactively changing it. You want to audit your hourly population to ensure compliance in every state. If you're in the tipped business, if your business involves your employees being tipped, there's also a minimum wage rate for that. So be sure you're comparing those tables as well. All right. In this section of... Payroll 101, we're going to talk about exception pays. When we say exception pays, those are things that are 
out of the norm, not the typical regular hours, OT hours, holiday hours. These are the bonuses, the commissions, the stipends, those one-off payments that you have to process as a payroll professional. So you want to look out for any complicated calculations in regards to commissions or bonuses to make sure that you're following all the proper guidelines. And you want to check with your local state government and federal government just to make sure that you're in compliance. Once again, that's one of the, one of the things you're going to hear as we continue to go along in Payroll 101. You want to make sure that you're in compliance because the majority of the stuff is laid out on a government level for you, federal and local. Typically, what I like to do is process my bonuses or any commissions on a separate check just in case it's not taxed properly for any reason. It falls through the cracks. He gets a bonus check and we pay it to the wrong person. We're able to void it, place a stop payment, do a reversal. Uh, request in our system of uh, record and we're able to try to pull that those funds back so that's something you want to look out for as well while you're processing another exception pay is tips as the federal minimum wage is seven dollars and 25 cents the tipped minimum wage is two dollars and 13 cents so as a tipped employee you need to be able to make at least 725 an hour that's what your tips and earnings need to equate to. If I'm a tipped employee, my employer has to ensure I have enough tips in order to at least make $7.25 an hour, all right? So that means that the employer is responsible for the other $5.12 that I haven't made in tips. So say I didn't get any tips this week on my job, my employer has to cover that other $5.12, okay, in order to get me to $7.25. So that's something you want to look out for as well to make sure that you're compliant to make sure that your tipped employees are getting up to that 725 minimum wage federal minimum wage now it may be different in your state you want to always lean to what's better for the employee remember that as an employer as a payroll professional you want to make sure that you remember that your employer always leans towards what is better for the employee okay the supplemental rate, when it comes to bonuses and commissions, anything that's under a million dollars is taxed at a 22% rate. That is the supplemental rate. So that's something you want to look out for. You want to make sure that you use that supplemental rate for your bonuses. Say somebody's getting a $10,000 bonus, use the supplemental tax rate. If somebody's getting a $1.1 million bonus, you can use the 25% tax rate for that. Okay. Sometimes employees usually get worked up about that. They're like, hey, how come you're taxing me at a much higher rate for bonuses? I have worked for this. So you got to tell them this is a standard set by the government. I love processing bonuses and commissions on separate checks. So that is best practice. If you have to pull one back, you don't need to pull their regular check back and their bonus check if you separate them into two different checks, okay? That's what I like to do as a best practice. Thank you for joining us today on our podcast, It's About Payroll. We're your hosts, Brian Escobar and William Duncan. And until the next time, folks, keep learning, keep growing, and most importantly, keep going.